Hey, do you know me? I carry one of these. Yeah. I'm Joe, I sing, and this is our new album. Let's do that. Oh, I... this is, yeah, this is, this is my corner of the world, which is kind of boring. See, Rick's got all this gear. They've got all this gear. <laughs> Phil and Vivian. Right. And I've got a mic stand. <laughs> Doesn't even have a mic at the moment. Advertise, 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 advertise. <laughs> the idea of it looking like the old kind of Thin Lizzy or Kiss uh, logo where it's just bright and like aircraft lights and with a water reflection thing was pretty much my idea. Um, and the inside, uh, we sat down and discussed. We'd done all these 70s songs, so I said, why don't we get an iconic 70s photographer to do the inside of the booklet? And why don't we do some images that are, uh, to us at least, um, you know, part of what of, of what we used to kind of get off on when we were listening to this kind of music. So getting Mick Rock to do the photo shoot was actually very, for us, very fortunate because he took three of the five original pictures on, on here. Um, he, he, that's Sav doing Freddie Mercury. And Mick Rock took that original picture. Vivian is Electric Warrior T-Rex. Mark Bolin. Mick didn't take that one. But same thing with the uh, me being the um, back of Ziggy Stardust. That's kind of like a, a, a kind of a, a tribute to the inside of the first Roxy Music album, where they were all holding guitars against a white background. Rick is Lou Reed from the Transformer album, another of Mick Rock's originals, and Phil is Iggy Pop from uh, Raw Power, I think, um, another Mick Rock original. You see, so we thought that was cute. All these images come from the same time period as the songs. We don't, we don't do a Lou Reed song on here, but it's such an iconic sleeve for our generation. Um, anybody that's too young to remember will just see it as a photo, and anybody that's old enough to remember, hopefully, will get a, a kind of a, a, you know, a bit of a laugh out of the, the fact that we've done it. You know. And of course, we had to make the disc look like vinyl. Seven inch red vinyl. Huh? <laughs> as a genuine article, as a, as, a, as a bona fide, legit Def Leppard record that shows, hopefully if people listen hard enough, they'll, they'll hear things in these songs that they will recognize in our music, which albeit 10, 15 years ago, these songs are from 30 years ago. So if you look at it from a time capsule point of view, 15, 20 years on from when these songs came out, we started forming our kind of direction and a lot of the songs on here show where our direction came from and I just think it's nice to be able to show the, uh, your, your fans or anybody that cares to listen where your true roots are and I think the, we, you can talk about it till the cows come on people don't necessarily listen but when you actually sing and play what your roots are people listen that's the idea anyway and I'm sticking to that theory <laughs> We're in very sunny, very warm, sweaty Burbank and we're rehearsing where we usually rehearse. Can't say the name because they never want to be coming down. But we've rehearsed here for forever. <laughs> we're really comfortable here, we love all the people here, it's, it's kind of cool. There! That's my guitar, and that's Curtis, he's my guitar tech. And this is my Jackson PC. PC standing for Phil Connor. And, um, And this is what we do. You know, what this guitar does, these are, these are kind of like, um, this is a sustainer. So you can just kind of hit this note. Isn't that lovely? And then you put this one in there. Anyway, it does that, so you can like sustain it forever if you... And this is my little rack and stuff. We have a bunch of them, um, all different shapes and colours and sizes and stuff. And this is actually a little relic from the 80s. I used to, actually, this was in like the Pour Some Sugar video, Animal video, Armageddon. It. This is called Bella because that's Bella Lugosi and it, it glows in the dark. 
you can't see it because you've got lights here, but if you turned everything off, Bella Lugosi would be smiling at you. So there you go. And some acoustics as well. Um, which are lovely. I don't, this one hasn't actually got any strings on it. Um, this is, it's a Tacoma. These are, these are lovely as well. But um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, yeah, on this, this leg of the tour, because we've been like um, goofing around trying to get a set list together. Um, that's the set list. There's no acoustic stuff on there at the moment. So it's all going to be loud and electric and fun. We only actually use these, I do anyway, just these lower cabs because if you use these high ones, they go down the microphone. It's directly in line with that. And then the guy out front, Ronan, mixing the sound goes, sounds like crap. It's too loud coming off of there. So we, we really try and keep that kind of, kind of down there. And it also, if you did have no ear protector things or, or mixes, you, it would actually be awful if you have these blaring in your ears all the time. It's... Smell is very strong in, in, in terms of um, putting you in a zone or, or, or a familiar place. So uh, one of the things uh, that, that, that's always, always good, no matter where you are in the world, you know, is trying to establish a sense of a familiar space and um, and the incense is one of those things that really that really helps me you know get to that place the kit it's uh, it's remained pretty similar for uh, for many years if anything we we tend to uh, we tend to simplify it um, you know, less moving parts, that kind of thing. But the way that I play it has, hasn't really hasn't really changed in, uh, in, in in many years. So I play basically top kit with my, with my right hand, and then uh, anything that I used to play with my left uh, my left arm, I play I play down here with my left foot. kind of thing and then the top kit remains pretty pretty similar um, other than um, the amount of hi-hats that I have some people may think I'm greedy but really um, having uh, several different fixed hats gives a, a sense of forward momentum because you can you can set all the, the different hi-hats to different openness some of the songs I'll use um, little phrase loops, um, like uh, percussion loops, like two beat loops, uh, which uh, which work pretty cool. Have you got any? Uh, this is Chad, by the way. Have you got, Hi, any, uh, have you got any phrase loops on there, on the hi hat? Yes. Just uh, just anything that kind of demonstrates that. So. Most of the songs, I'll just, uh, I'll just have more of a configuration where, you know, main kick drum, and then I'll have an electronic kick drum down here. So I can do metal songs for our uh, in-house uh, metal head, uh, Dave Wolf, and, um, and, then, um, and then, like I explained before, you know, right hand, left foot, right hand, left foot, and then just using the, the hi-hats either conventionally or if I'm playing uh, if I'm playing left foot on snare drum then what I'll do is I'll use the, the fixed hi-hats and it all works seamlessly doesn't it Chad? every day Most days it sounds like we're building a garden shed, but uh, then on the good days, you know, it, it resembles a song, a Def Leppard song with that, so.
Hi, I'm Sav from Def Leppard and welcome to our rehearsal room. This is where we do all the hard work before we go and have some fun on tour. Just rehearsing new songs and trying to remember the old ones. I mean, a lot of people have seen our shows and accuse us of actually having real backing vocals on tape and things like that. We've never, ever done that. I mean, that's why we spent so long in rehearsals losing our voices so that when we get out on the road we get it to sound as good as, as, as well as the album really and that takes a lot of practice I'll take you around the, the rehearsal stage a little bit uh, I've got two cabinets here uh, I always have two the other side of the, the drums so that both guitar players can hear the bass even though they might not want to at times but... On stage I use these, they're sent by a, a MIDI cable round to the back of the stage and they go into a, a little box which has got all kinds of different sounds uh, and depending on what song we're playing something like that we would use in Rock of Ages just to, just to fill the bass sound out so if we're going a bit of fuller sound on the bottom because it's a very sparse song with not many guitars in places uh, it's it, it's great to uh, just to enhance the sound it kind of sounds like a bass and it also sounds like a keyboard as well which is which is what we always try to achieve on the records because the bass has just got a it's just got to sound like an orchestra of basses loud guitars, I love melody, and I love big backing vocals and, you know, songs that make you, make you do that. So the pedals basically just come into a function of just enhancing an overall sound. They're not critical to the song, they're just a little, little bit of icing on the cake that we use. Hi, I'm Vivian, I play guitar. Over here is my pet monkey, Dave. Come and meet Dave. Hey, Dave! He's so excited to be here. Can't you tell? Yeah, this is Dave, my pet monkey and guitar tech. And uh, he does email while I do all the work. Um, and this is all the gear and, you know, it just basically makes me sound great. So I do none of the work. I just stand there and this plays all the music. Here I have a small collection of Gibson Les Pauls, the one and only. And um, that's about it. There's not a lot to it. Three chords, some marshals. Away you go. I use these metal guitar picks. Um, See, they have a little Def Leppard. You can catch the light. And I flick them around a lot because they fly up in the air and then they come back. And sometimes I lose them because I get lost in the lights. So, uh, and sometimes I have to throw them at Dave when he's not paying attention. Hey, you're going to put somebody's eye out with that. I haven't put his eye out yet, but I do have insurance just in case it happens. <laughs> No, the, the set, when we go on the road this year, we're actually going to have uh, a, a custom set. There's going to be uh, stairs and, and walkways along the top of the back line. And so you won't actually see the speakers on stage. It'll be a clean look. Um, and it'll look a lot more glamorous than this place. We will have a big, big screen, which will be about the whole size of this room. 12 feet high and about 50 feet long. And uh, I'll be holding the remote control so we can watch football or car racing, at my discretion. My monkey, isn't he handsome? He's Professionally dead. trained monkey, I do it just for the t-shirts. Yes, <laughs> there you go, you gotta have one. Everyone should have a monkey. You go now, you've been here long enough. Go, 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 go away. <laughs> 